Yeah, God bless you, Rob Wood here of Rob Wood's Ministries. I want to talk to you today about the power of covenant. My God, people, when we understand the covenant that Christ has made with us, the covenant that Jesus has made with his church, you won't be easily duped. You won't be easily deceived when you are convinced and understand the power of covenant. Now, the word covenant simply means pact or an agreement. Now, in 1 Samuel chapter 18, verse 3, it says, Then Jonathan and David made a covenant because he loved him as his own soul. And you would think that's a little unusual because Saul was Jonathan's dad. And obviously Saul was trying to hunt down David. And, you know, you think Dave, Jonathan would be more loyal to his dad than David? No, no, he knew the right thing to do. God showed him the person to align with. And we've got to have people in our life that we also align ourselves with, that we enter into covenant with. And now listen to this. In 2 Samuel chapter 4, verse 4, Jonathan had a son, or Saul had a grandson, who was lame in his feet. The Bible says when he was five years old, the nurse fled and dropped a young man named Mephibosheth. And as a result, the Bible says he became lame or crippled in his feet. Was not this young man's fault? Someone dropped him. Someone hurt him. There are people under the sound of my voice where someone hurts you emotionally, physically. Someone dropped you. It wasn't your fault. But now you got two choices. You can stay there and you can stay in hurt or you not, or you can become better and not stay bitter. Now let's see this. 2 Samuel chapter 9, David said, Is there still someone left in the house of Saul that I can find covenant with or mercy or kindness because of Jonathan's sake? David remembered the covenant that Jonathan made with him. And he said, I'm looking for people in Saul's house that I can show kindness to for the sake of covenant. Verse 5, King David comes and brings a man by the name of Mephibosheth out of the house of Machar, it says, from Lodabar. The word Lodabar means the land of low living. So David finds Mephibosheth in the land of low living. He's bitter. He's not becoming better, but because of covenant, he's about to find out what God is going to do to him and for him and through him. When Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, comes to David, he fell on his face. He said, here's your servant. David says, do not fear. I'll show you kindness for Jonathan, your father's sake, and I will restore to you all the land of Saul, your grandfather. So there's a restoration where Mephibosheth lost ground. You know, I'm thinking in Joel, it says, God will restore to you the years the canker worm and the locust have eaten. Now also it says, and you shall eat bread at my table continually. It also, it says, Mephibosheth, your master's son, shall eat bread at my table also. And then it says, he shall eat at my table like one of the king's sons. Mephibosheth dwelt in and he ate continually at the king's table. So he now Mephibosheth finds himself at the king's table, feasting in the courts of the Lord. And I believe David put that table there on purpose because it covered Mephibosheth's lameness. It covered his crippleness. In other words, no one could see that he was crippled or lame. It put him on the same playing field as everyone else. And I believe David made a statement where he said, he will eat at my table like one of my sons. And, you know, you've got to have proper perspective in life. When you realize you're a son of the Most High, you know, the Bible says the earth is waiting for the manifestation of the sons and the daughters to arise in this hour. So a son, when he shows up at the will, has a right to the inheritance simply because of his birthright. Because he was born into the family, whether he's in his grandfather's will or his dad or his parents, aunts, uncles, whatever, because he was a son. Now, we're a son of God. The covenant that Christ made with you cannot be broken, people. Trust me, you can, you can leave, 
but he will never leave you nor forsake you. Jesus says, I will be with you to the ends of the age. And, you know, it's the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. This is the new covenant. The, the covenant, the old covenant that was built with the sacrifice of bulls and goats does not cut it no more because there needed to be a spotless lamb. Now, Mephibosheth also says here, he says, he bowed himself, what is your servant that I should look upon such a dead dog as I? He had the wrong, you know, introspection of himself. He was seeing himself through the wrong eyes. You know, the Bible says, we have got to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. And let me just suggest you will never love your neighbor the way you're supposed to till you love yourself the way you're supposed to. And I'm not talking about a self-love where you love yourself and you're constantly looking into the mirror and, you know, that's vanity, that's pride. I'm talking about a healthy relationship with yourself because the one person that, you, that will never leave you is you. You will always live with yourself. You can't escape yourself. So until we love ourselves the way we're supposed to, and we have proper perspective, you know, perspective, we'll never love our neighbors the way we're supposed to. Again, we're talking about covenant here. In the book of Hebrews chapter 8, verse 6 and 7, it says, He has obtained a more excellent ministry inasmuch as he is also a mediator of a better covenant which was established on better promises. For if the first covenant had been faultless, there would be no place to have been sought for a second. You know, we know the story where the glory was fading away from Moses, so he had to wear a veil because the glory was vanishing. It was fading away from his face. And, you know, God bless you people out there that want to try and keep the law. If you want to have a relationship with two tablets of stone, go for it. That is not a, that if you think you can keep the law, in fact, Christ came on the scene and he said, if anyone calls someone a fool, you're in danger of going to hell. And what Christ was stating was the law is not impossible to keep, but trust me, it really is. And that's why Christ came to fulfill the law that you couldn't keep. And you know, think of that statement. If you call someone a fool, how many people have we called names at or to or even mentally? What Christ was saying was he made it so hard to keep the law that only through relationship with me can you have success serving my father. Now, Hebrews chapter 8, verse 13, in that he says a new covenant. He has made the first obsolete. The word obsolete means no longer of use. Now what is becoming obsolete is growing old and ready to vanish away. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 24. To Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant and the blood of sprinkling that speaks better than things of Abel. My God, people, you know, Paul would come on the scene and say, hey, his message was the new covenant, was the grace message. We know Galatians 4 talked about Abraham having two sons, the son of the promise and the son of that was not the promise, which was Ishmael. One was born of the bondwoman. One was born of the free woman. There's a constant enmity between both of them. There's a persecution. Again, if you want to live under the law, go for it. I'm going to tap into the grace, the new covenant, the relationship, because that is what enables us and gives us the strength to serve him. I'm talking to you about the power of covenant, people. I want to release a prayer of impartation. Father... I pray you convince your people on the covenant that you made with us because of the cross. In fact, that covenant is so powerful, it is impossible for Christ to break it with you. The covenant was once and once only, the shed blood of Jesus Christ, my God, walk in it. You've got to be convinced that God loves you the most, that of the seven billion people on the earth, you are his favorite. I'm convinced of that. I believe God loves Rob Wood the most. I believe I'm his favorite. I'm not saying that in a haughty way. I'm not saying that in a prideful way. But I'm, you've got to have that same revelation that the covenant Christ made with you, the pact, the agreement, because, look, there's no holes in my hands, people. Let's stop adding to the cross of Christ. Let's stop re-crucifying him. Let's walk in the covenant that God has already established in Jesus' name. God bless you. Rob Wood signing out here.